The following opinions are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve for Botest.com, and in this video, we're going to conduct a features inspection and performance evaluation of the next iteration of the popular 380 Super Sport crossover from Formula, this time with outboard power. Choose power ranging from triple 350s, 400s, 400 racing, or, as with the case of our test boat, triple 450 racing engines with joystick piloting. Let's start by looking at our features. There's a 10 foot by 3 foot 4 inch platform at the stern and 4 foot 1 inch extended swim platforms with 8 inch pull up cleats flank the triple Merc 450 racing engines. A hatch is finished on both sides and conceals a 4 step reboarding ladder and this is duplicated to the port side. Formula has a clever addition in the form of this 6 foot 5 inch padded leaning post. It's a comfortable way to add to the entertainment capabilities and even include 6 stainless steel beverage holders. Most importantly, the engines are still able to tilt all the way out of the water with it installed. Sockets just ahead will accommodate board storage racks. Then of course, there's this sun pad with reversible backrests. Even with the seat backs flipped to face forward, there's still 3 feet 1 inch of usable sun pad available. Dual stainless beverage holders are to both sides with a charge port to the starboard combing. Storage is underneath. If the sun gets to be too much, then a simple button press extends the optional sure shade awning from just under the trailing edge of the hardtop. The cockpit deck is up an 8-inch step, and this is where the lion's share of the entertaining will take place. The 2-foot, 1-inch walkthrough to the main cockpit is just a port and protected by a stainless steel framed acrylic and outward opening gate. A Rockford Fosgate stereo is to the port side. At the top is an optional electric grill. To starboard, the seating consists of a U-shaped settee. Storage is under all seats. In the lumbar area are grab handles, more beverage holders, and cell phone connectivity. And because all seats need a grab handle, the end seat has a pull-out one to the side. Pedestal bases will accommodate a pair of tables. Shorter pedestals allow for converting this area into another sun pad. And the tables store right underneath the seat. To port is opposing seating in the form of a bench seat with the same treatments of storage and connectivity. All decking is covered with snap-in rubberized non-skid matting and vinyl decking is optional. A refreshment center is located just ahead of the port side seating. It includes a Corian counter with a covered sink. Next to the beverage holders is a socket for the pedestal TV that plugs into the concealed outlets just alongside. Below is a full-length grab rail, a trash receptacle, storage drawers, and refrigeration. To port, there's a 1 foot 10 inch walkthrough to the bow accessed through a sliding walkthrough windshield section and a lower acrylic door. Along the port bulwarks is storage, including storage for the cockpit TV and dock lines, and let's not forget the blender. Seating is wraparound with padded bolsters serving as backrests. Naturally, there's storage under all but the aft seat. Elongated grab rails are above. As with the cockpit, Speakers, grab rails, beverage holders, and connectivity are in the lumbar areas. Non-skid decking continues and there's another stereo control about the port seat. Two pedestal bases are in the deck to accommodate adding tables to the mix. There are sockets in the grab rails to accommodate supports for a sunshade with the filler plugs having dedicated storage right next to the trash receptacle. To the port side of the helm is the door to the cabin. Inside headroom is 6 feet 5 inches. Forward is a U-shaped seating area around a pedestal table. By lowering the table and adding a filler, then lifting the forward bolster, we expose a deeper section allowing for conversion to a berth. Dedicated storage for the table is just above. A window is just over the settee with an opening window to both port and starboard. And then a modest galley that includes a sink with a slide away cover and a microwave is just above. A 32-inch TV is at the aft bulkhead and facing the forward dinette. A refrigerator is to the port side of the companionway. Just aft and under the main deck is the mid-berth. It includes a large berth with storage and a TV at the foot, as well as a window over the headboard. The head is to starboard and, as expected, it's well appointed. Headroom is 6 feet 2 inches. Moving to operational features, the helm is to starboard and includes dual 18-inch displays. There's a 7-inch Mercury display and a bow thruster joystick to the left of the wheel. Further left is a glove box with an inductive charger just beneath and connectivity plugs are right alongside. Below are the electrical rocker switches and climate control vents. To the right of the wheel, there's a cell phone holder with inductive charging. Further to starboard, there's a separate panel for the joystick, the trim tab controls, 
the remote for the forward displays that's accessible from the seated position, and the digital throttle and shift binnacle. Still further back are the climate control pad and switches to activate the air conditioning and underwater lights. To port is convenient counter space with a stainless rail to contain any items. At 45 inches, the seat is a true triple wide with individual flip bolsters and dual footrests are provided. Under the seat is storage for a 35 quart cooler on a slide out tray. There's a large single piece windshield providing excellent visibility supplemented by the opening walkthrough windshield to port. To both sides are additional windows with the aft one opening from the front to do a remarkable job of scooping air in when underway. Need even more air? There's an opening sunroof. And if the sun gets to be too much, there are shades to pull across. Further forward, there's a hatch over the ground tackle. It consists of a Lumar windlass with a chain road leading out through a chain stopper, and then to a through the stem stainless steel anchor roller supporting a polished stainless steel anchor. An access port is alongside leading to the road locker and a quick connect is provided for a washdown hose. There's an electrically actuated hatch exposing what would be the engine compartment on the stern drive version. Here it provides accessibility to the mechanical components. Notice the port is another deck hatch so we can still access the cockpit with the main hatch open and then expose even more access to this compartment when it's opened. Among the highlights, there's a sea chest limiting the number of through hulls and all connections are double clamped and labeled. House batteries and the charger are to port with the water heater just behind Engine start batteries are aft. There's a 7.5 kW generator forward with its battery switch right above. To the port transom are the shore power, TV and cable connections with storage just above. Also under this storage hatch are rocker switches for the main engine start batteries and parallel switching. The main electrical panel is down below next to the companionway. 12 volt on top, generator and 120 volt are located just below. Now let's see how she performed. With a triple set of 450 horsepower Mercury racing engines turning 14.6 by 20 props and run up to 5900 RPM, the 380 SSC OB topped out at 63.5 miles per hour. Backing off the throttle of 4500 RPM brought us to a best economic cruise setting of 43.5 miles per hour and 55 gallons per hour. That translated into 0.8 miles per gallon and a range of 214 statute miles while still holding back a 10% reserve of the boat's 300 gallon total fuel capacity. She's quick to respond to the throttle and we had her coming up on plane in an average 3.7 seconds. Keeping the throttles to the stops brought us to 20 miles per hour in 9.7 seconds, 30 in 16.3, 40 in 23.5 and on through 50 miles an hour in an average 35.9 seconds. The 380 SSC rides on formula's proven fast tech twin step bottom design and bottom shape is a good compromise between speed and comfort. The boat knocks down waves with ease and she carves cleanly through turns. If the captain gets real aggressive, she leans noticeably into the maneuver but still completes it without concern. When it's time to pull into the dock, Mercury's joystick piloting system makes everyone look like a pro. None of the engines are connected with a tie bar so all move independently when the joystick is activated. And when using this joystick, we found it to be dialed in perfectly, allowing for precision docking. Now one final note, no inspection of a formula boat would be complete without mention of its high gloss painted hull, which is superior to gel coat, which oxidizes and needs lots of careful maintenance. Formula is one of the few builders in class that paints its hulls, and that's why they're usually the best looking boats on the water. With Formula Flex, accent colors are interchangeable, Formula My Way upgrades put you further in the designer's seat with the full range of Pantone and automotive colors at your fingertips. This boat has a nice fit and finish and quality of build that we've come to expect from the brand along with the handling and economy of an outboard power all rolled into one with the 380 SSC OB from Formula Boats. And that's my full features inspection and performance evaluation for BoatTest.com. I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.